Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I could go on for another half hour in praising him. And you know, we might just do that one of these days and just allow the Holy Spirit just to, um, you know, do his thing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, if you have come with a need of the Lord, man, you're in the right place. It's better to, better to be here than in the worry room. You know the worry, worry, worry room? We worry, we shut ourselves down and, and we worry and we bite our nails and, and uh, we don't know where, where the miracle is going to come, whether we're going to get out of the mess that we're in or whatever. Hallelujah. How many have been there in those, in those, in those times? I've been there many, many times. Hallelujah. But the good thing is this, is that the Lord brought us through. The Lord brought us through. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you submit yourself to him, I tell you, he'll bring you through whatever. So uh, anyway, welcome to the house of God today. And um, we're, uh, we're uh, I, I tell you, I think that God is going to do something with the scriptures. Um. That's all he's given me, a scriptures and the Holy Ghost. Do you think that's enough? Yes. <laughs> and tomorrow the same thing. You don't want to miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be an evangelistic service. And if you know anybody that don't know the Lord, bring him in. You never know. We're going to go for salvations, healings, whatever. So uh, I use, you know, when the Lord says, you know, no, no notes, just a couple of scriptures. My knees begin to tremble a little bit. <laughs> because, you know, uh, yes, we trust him. And, um, but God is desperate. He wants to do something in our midst. God wants to do something for Canada. God wants to do something for Toronto. And, um, and God is frustrated. How many know that some of us are frustrated? You know, because we see we see the mess that our nation is in, and um, and you know, you know, are we gonna die with this nation in the sin and and in the state that they are, or is God gonna come through, or you know, all those things go through our minds. Uh, but no matter what happens, no matter what we see on the outside, we have to endure to the end. No matter what happens, right? No matter what happens, you got to keep pressing in. I always, you know, uh, compare a Christian life is like driving a Jeep, a four-wheel four Jeep up a mountain. You have a full tank of gas, and that full tank of gas will get you right to the top of the mountain, but you have no brakes. You got to floor that thing. No matter how many rocks are in the way, no matter how rainy might be, just floor that thing. Hallelujah. Because you have a full tank and that full tank will take you to the top. And that's, you know, that's the best way that I can explain the Christian walk is that, you know, we're called to endure. We're called to make it through. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ with strength in us. Amen. Creator is in. We're going to talk about this a little bit tomorrow. Hallelujah. But today we're going to kind of, uh, this is our third class. The first one was for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let's stand for a moment before we pray. You've been sitting down for a bit. Shake your legs. Wave a hand around you. Say hi to those around you. And uh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Glory be to God. And throw you can throw a, a, a holy kiss. Mwah. There we go, a holy kiss. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I, I like to see, anyway, before you sit it, don't sit right now. Let's just pray. Father God, right now, we thank you and we praise you. You are an awesome God. We thank you for your presence already here. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. We thank you for the devils that they're out. And uh, you have destroyed their plans for this meeting. So, Father, I pray, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will give us ears to hear. O oh God, that which the Spirit of God is saying to us, to the church, 
that we may hear and obey and take that on and do what is needed to be done in our lives, that which is calling us to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be obedient people. Oh God, not to put up a fuss or fight against you because we're no match against you, oh God. So Father God, I pray God that we will live a life of submission unto you and to your will and to your purposes in our lives no matter what the cost may be because there is a higher cost and that is living for the world. Hallelujah. So Father God, we submit ourselves to you and we say thank you in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I'm going to read the Bible and let the Holy... You can sit down. Yeah, you can sit down. Uh, we're recording this. You know, our, our live stream has gone down. And they're coming to fix it on Tuesday. Um, so uh, I'm recording this. So we're going to put it uh, on uh, Facebook and YouTube and all the tubes. Uh, because I believe that this is a message that needs to be heard. I believe that this message is the foundation of of Christianity, is a foundation to revival, is a foundation to our lives, is our, is our foundation for the Word of God to become alive in us. Um, there are no shortcuts. Amen? You cannot take shortcuts. Shortcuts, you'll get into a hole. You know, there are no shortcuts. You got to do it God's way. Yesterday we had a nice prayer meeting here and we talked about the Lord's Prayer. And thy will be done. And you know, when we ask God's will into our lives, we have to be willing to let go of the things that are an obstacles between us and God. How many say amen to that? Amen. Right? You can't say your will be done in my life and it's still holding on to things. The Lord says, I'll go to the next one, the one that is really wanting me. I'll go to the next one, the one that really wants to, to uh, let go of things in their lives. Amen? So I'm going to be reading... Um, uh, Galatians chapter 1 and Galatians chapter 2. Okay, uh, one of them, it will be the Amplified Bible. The other one will be the New King James Ver Version. But they will, be, they will both be anointed of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will expand this thing. Uh, here is a little story of Paul. I, you know, I'm, I'm very intrigued with Paul. If we're going to learn how to die, if we're going to learn how to, how to live for Christ... And for us to be able to say, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain, or it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. We got to learn from the Word of God, and, and, and the perfect example is Paul. Amen? Uh, his name was Saul, and then he became Paul, and we all know that. And here, in, uh, I'll be reading from verses 6. Here, here's this frustration. I wanted to talk about chapter 2, but we got to learn from chapter 1 because he's very upset. He's very frustrated. And, uh, and, and, and I can relate to him. I am frustrated and I am irritated to see what's going around us in this nation. Amen. I am frustrated in many ways. And frustration is good as long as you press in. Frustration is good if it causes you to fast and to pray. Frustration is good if it causes you to get closer to the Lord. Frustration is no good if you, if you compromise. Frustration is no good if you become just like the others. You know, Ezekiel, I believe in chapter 2, God says to him, he says, I'm sending you to a rebellious people. Imagine, I'm sending you to a rebellious people, and then he says, be careful that you don't become like them. Right? <laughs> so, so he says, just be careful that you don't become like them. So verse 6 over here, he says, uh, this is Paul speaking. This is a letter from Paul. I mean, we, we're reading a letter of Paul. He says, I'm astonished and extremely irritated that you are so quickly shifting your allegiance and deserted him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different, even contrary gospel. He's speaking to Christians here, eh? How many say amen? He's not preaching to, he's not talking to the non-Christians. 
As you know, I mean, he went and taught the churches, gave his heart for the churches, and then he left and he came back. And what did he say? Who in the world has bewitched you? What happened to you? And this is something similar over here. I mean, he's frustrated. He's irritated. Why? Because you are so quickly shifting your allegiance and deserting him who call you by the grace of Christ. Why? For a different gospel. Oh, man. There are so many gospels out there. How many say amen to that? So how many? They, 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 they look just like the real one. But if you have no discernment of these gospels, you can fall for that and then go in the journey that they're going. Amen. I don't know about you, but the reason I love discipleship, because discipleship, we go after the real gospel. The gospel that convicts. The gospel that shakes us. The, the, the gospel that help us to die of self and, and our carnality and our flesh and our desires, uh, the worldliness. That's the gospel that I want. Why? Because he is holy. He is holy. And without holiness, no one is going to see the Lord. So, you know, this little life that we have here, you know, we might live 80 years old, 90 years old, 100, 100, maybe 20. You know, whatever t t time God allows us to live here, this is an opportunity for us to please him. Not to please ourselves. But this is a life that we ought to please him. But we have an enemy. Right? We have an enemy that one of his greatest weapons that he has is deception. Deception. So he creates different gospels. He, uh, he uh, supports a lot of different gospels. Amen? <laughs> oh my God, are you with me this morning? Or this afternoon? Are you with me? I preached a message a long time ago that we have a, a pimping church. Oh my God, you, can you use that name in church? Yes. There are a lot of gospels out there that they're pimping the people of God. They say, come, we'll give you a nice little message that will tickle your ears. Give me your money and go and work again and make some money and come back here. How many know that that gospel is here today? In this world today. Hallelujah. There are many gospels. And uh, you know for us to. For us to go after the real gospel. We must be students of the word of God. We have to be saturated in the word of God. And, and, and be aware that we can be deceived. That we can be misled. Because the enemy can deceive nations. And if the enemy can deceive nations, he can deceive individuals. One individual that he cannot deceive is someone that is saturated by the Spirit of God. Full of God. Pleasing God. Dead to this world. And alive in Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we know that we don't have that, 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 we, that we can, how do we know the true gospel? Well, look around you. I mean, you know, if, 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 if the true gospel was here today, they will crucify the ones preaching the true gospel. Come on, it happened in the Bible. Yeah, hallelujah. Look around you. I mean, this place, I don't know about you, but we have 7 million people in this, in this city, the GTA area. They're hungry for uh, what? For wrong gospels. But they're not hungry for the true gospel. The gospel of repentance. The gospel that you have to be separated from the world into the things of God. He says, come out from among them, saith God. Amen? That's the gospel that I want. The gospel that prepares me to reign with him for a thousand years. I want the gospel that prepares me to be in heaven forever and ever and ever. I want the gospel that will cause me to be free on this earth and to sing and say, I am so glad that Jesus Christ has set me free. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. There is no greater joy than to have the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and be able to be free on earth and be ready to reign with him for a thousand years and to live with him for eternity. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, verse 7, which is really not another gospel, but they are obviously some people masquerading as teachers who are disturbing and confusing who? You. So there is many masquerading as teachers of the word of God. When I read this, man, you better be careful, right? You better not only carry your Bible, but you better know the Bible. You better live the Bible. You better understand the Bible. Because over here, Paul is warning us of what can happen. And remember, these things took place back in the day. Today is a million times worse than it was before. How many say amen to that? Come on. So he says, you know, if there were people masquerading back then as teachers of the word of God... How much more is it today, saints? Hallelujah. Come on. You see, the reason that people don't like the true gospel is because it eliminates their wrong gospels. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, don't go ahead of me. Go with me. So he says, masquerading as teachers who are disturbing. That's carnality, that's flesh, and confusing you with the misleading counterfeit teaching. You have to understand, counterfeit teaching is similar to the real thing. But it's counterfeit. You know, I, I've seen $100 counterfeit, and I've seen uh, uh, a real one. Well, you can't really tell the difference unless you know what to look. Right? My son buys the real expensive shoes. I buy the fake shoes. Right? He, he, uh, he's in the business of shoes. So he went and, uh, he, you know, he buys $500 shoes, $1,000 shoes, and he sells them. So I went to Cambodia a few years ago, and I bought exactly a pair of shoes that he has. For $45 US. Right? And I came and I said, Daniel, here it is. He said, oh, that's fake. I said, how do you know that that's fake? And he, I said, that's a real one. I lied to him for a minute just to catch his attention. I said, that's a real one. And he came and I said, bring yours and bring mine. Look at it. Oh, well, that one, the color is a little bit off. Well, maybe I was walking in the mud, something like that. Right? So anyway, so you get my, my drift. You see, there is over here, but Paul is saying, be careful. Because there's going to be a lot of teachers, a lot of pulpits, a lot of preachers, a lot of ministries that they look like the real thing, but they're not. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they fought me over the years and they says, well, you know, they, they have thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Well, I preached another message a long time ago. Maybe one of these says I'm going to preach it. Do you know that wrong gospels with thousands and thousands and thousands of people, the devil is, is sponsoring and supporting those ministries. Come on. If we're going to go after death, if we're going to go after Christ-likeness, if we're going to go after truth, we have to understand that we must speak truth. We have to be careful who we are supporting. Because many of them, the devil doesn't have to do anything. He says, look... They like messages that tickle the ears. They like the glamour of these big ministries. All the great singers and all of these things. And they send millions of dollars to them. I don't need to do anything. Let them continue to preach a wrong gospel. 
For there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end is death. Oh, hallelujah. You see, this is, this is what's missing in the body of Christ. This is what's missing in our churches. The fear of God, no fear of God. We talk back to the pastors. We have no respect for the house of God. We have no respect one for another. What is that? That is a sign of wrong gospels. So in order for the Lord to clean up the wrong gospels, we must penetrate with the true gospel. And the true gospel will eliminate the wrong gospel and its followers. And the true gospel will deliver those that are in the wrong gospels into the right gospels. And God will bring the people that should be part of the right gospel. Yes. <laughs> and this is just the introduction. But what a powerful introduction. He's frustrated. I am frustrated. I'll record this as well. Imagine going to, the prov to a province where you preach the true gospel. And 90% of leaders reject the true gospel. 90%. They wouldn't even meet with me. And I challenge them all. I says, come. I never went to Bible college, but come. Let's sit down and do it on the radio. Let's sit down and open up the Bible and let you, let me hear you attack what I'm doing and see if it's scriptural or not scriptural. When you have the true gospel, there is no fear of wrong gospels. Because God will always back up the true gospel. As he backed up Elijah, he will back us up when we have the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Eye has not seen, no ear has heard. Oh my God, what God is about to do in the city with those that are preaching the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation. I got a call by a well-known evangelist. He was the director of... Uh, of a big ministry in the United States and Canada for many years. Then he got involved here with Huntley Street for many years. And he called me about, I don't know, five years ago. And he says, John, Canada has fallen to be one of the worst countries to win souls for Jesus Christ. One of the worst countries to win, to win souls for Jesus Christ. So equals what? Wrong Gospels. Because if we have the true gospel, the true gospel is the power of God to salvation. Amen. So if we're going backwards, it's because we're watering down, we're, we're uh, watering down the message. We're compromising the message. We're pleasing man than pleasing God. We're afraid to stand alone. Counterfeit teachers. They want to distort the gospel of Christ. Distort it. They, they, they didn't say it's going to change it. It's going to distort it. It's going to sound like the real one. But it's not going to be the real one. Twisting it. Into something which is absolutely is not. Verse 8. But even if we or an angel from heaven shall preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we originally preached to you. Let him be condemned to destruction. As we have said before. So I now say again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel different from that which you have received from us. Let him be condemned to distraction. Wow. 
I mean, I can, we can talk about the different Gospels. I can probably pick at least 20 of different Gospels that are so real out there today that are not really the real Gospel. So, he says, if a wrong Gospel is preached, they will be condemned to destruction. My question is this, what about the followers that are following those wrong Gospels? That's right. Teachings like this is what's going to make that devil inside of us, some of us. <laughs> I shouldn't have came today. It would have been better for me to stay in, in bed than to be, you know, the, 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 the devil goes, oh, you see, he's condemning you. He is judging you. I'm not judging nobody. I'm just reading scriptures with the Holy Ghost. Tomorrow is going to be reading scriptures with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Am I now trying to win the favor and approval of men or of God? Or am I seeking to please someone? If I were still trying to be popular with men, I will not be a bond servant of Christ. Do you get it? You say, if I wanted to be popular among the crowds, I wouldn't be a bond servant of Christ. I wouldn't be a servant of Christ. Because that's a contradiction to what the true gospel teaches. The true gospel doesn't teach to be popular. The true gospel, as we're going to read in the next chapter, it teaches to be dead in Christ. And to stay dead in Christ, that Christ may live through you. <laughs> My God. This is a beautiful letter. I'm sure it was registered. Verse 11, he says, for I want you to know, believers... He's talking to believers. That the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. It is not a human invention pattern after any human concept. Verse 12. For indeed I did not receive it from man. Come on, come on, come on. Lord fill us with a spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Give us a spirit of revelation so that way we can, we can receive revelation from the word of God. And understand what a true disciple really is. A true disciple must have a true gospel. I don't want to represent a wrong gospel. I'll read this again. It says, I did not receive it from man. Nor was I taught it. But I received it through a direct revelation of Jesus Christ. You can go to Bible college all you want. Come on. Bible college can give you the ABCs. God, the Bible college can give you the word of God. But if you want the true gospel, it's not a gospel that will be taught by men. But it will be a revelation of Almighty God into your heart, into your spirit, into your mind, into your soul. And then you say, I got it. I got it. I got the true gospel. And once you have it. You know that you cannot contaminate yourself with any other. You see, the problem is that we haven't had the revelation of the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if we did, we wouldn't act like we are. 
We women struggle with the things that we struggle with. You see, we struggle because there is a lack. A lack of what? A lack of truth. A lack of revelation. A lack of seeing him as he is. So this is, this is what we ought to teach in Bible college. That by the time they finish the three, four, five years of Bible college, those men and women leave that Bible college dead of themselves. But they come out of our Bible college and they go back and play bingo. And they go back and serve, serve tables. And they go back. Rather than being full of the power of God. The spirit of God. The true gospel of God. They are baptized with vinegar. Thank God. We have people full of the Holy Ghost upon this earth. Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. But we need to see the contrary. Hallelujah. I was talking to the youth the young adults here last night. And I said to them, you know, I, I always think the worst before I think the best of people. And they say, what? Yeah, because when they do something bad, I won't be surprised. I expected it. So uh, then they, when you have the true gospel... Then you, you expect people to have the wrong gospel. Because many of us, we think that everybody has the true gospel. Have you accepted Jesus in your heart? Or yes, okay, you have the good gospel. You, accept, you, 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 you got baptized in water? Oh yeah, you went under? Oh, you got the good gospel. You know, and, 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 we, and we think that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is asking Jesus into the hearts. It's getting baptized. It's carrying a Bible. It's attending the prayer meeting. And, and all of this, that's not the true gospel. That's not the true gospel. Who had the true gospel? Paul did. Peter did. After the upper room. Amen. You should read about what happened to all the disciples. Hang. Torture. Crucify. Here's an application. You like to apply? Anybody want to apply? The job, if you endure until the end, and you, and, 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 you know, you might get crucified. You might get tortured. You might be in prison. You might be in this. Who wants to come? Anybody. Come on, let's have an altar call. Let's find out how many of us are willing to go. But if he died for me, I'm going to die for him. Amen. As I was praying, I said, Lord, I don't, pray, I, I don't pray too much for my kids, for my children. He says, well, son, we have a deal. He reminded me of my deal with him. And what's that deal? Lord, I look after your family, you look after mine. And for me to look after God's family, I must have the right gospel. So how am I protecting my family? I'm protecting my family by having the right gospel, living the right gospel, confessing the right gospel, and living it to its fullness as much as I can. No matter who follows, no matter who follows me, no matter who likes me, no matter whatever, you know, I want to get a hold of the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when I have the true gospel, he will look after me. He will look after me in my coming in and going out. He will bless me. He will look after my family. He will look after my marriage. He will look after my hope. He will look after everything. Why? Because I have the revelation of the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're right. 
Holy Spirit says, he says, man, in churches, they won't invite you back if you preach like that. He's right. I don't know if that was the Holy Ghost or an angel, but somebody whispered that in my ears just now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah. And then he continues as you have heard of my career and former manner of life in Judaism. How I used to hunt down and persecute the church of God extensively. And with fanatical zeal try my best to destroy it. And you have heard now I surpass many of my contemporaries among my countrymen in my advanced studies of the laws of Judaism as I was as I was extremely loyal to the traditions of my ancestors. Verse 15. But when God, oh, but when God, who had chosen me and had set me apart before I was born, and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I may preach him among the Gentiles as the good news, the way of salvation. I did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me, nor did I even go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and stayed there a while and afterward returned once more to Damascus. So here he's given us his credential. And then he says, you know, but God is the one that chose me. God has chosen me. God has set me apart. How many know that a lot of churches, a lot of pews, they need to be set apart unto God? Oh, hallelujah. That's why, you know, when I see these parents coming in to commit their babies to the Lord. Man, it should be all the way around. We should commit the parents to train that little baby in the ways of the Lord and to be an example to them. We have to get, you see, the true gospel gets rid of all the hypocrisy in the church. Amen. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 2. Next, next, next one. Now I'm going to start with uh, verse 14. So that was just the introduction for us to understand the second chapter. Verse 14. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, but when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. My, my, mind. Do you know what he's saying? He says, you know, I went to Bethel Church. And I saw... That they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. What he was saying, he said, wait a minute. I went to church the other day. And all I see is some things that are contrary to the true gospel. Amen. Come on. Contrary to the, the, uh, to the true gospel. You see, those that have the true gospel can keep away from wrong gospel. Those that do not know the true gospel cannot keep away from wrong gospels. Because wrong gospels are very inviting. I'll tell you a secret. But it's more a warning to all of us. Because I fell for it many years ago. And I can tell you this. In the hardest times of my life. I went, not purposely of course. I went to wrong gospels that tickled my ear. Positive gospels. If it was finances, the gospel of prosperity. If it was this, if I was going through this, I will go on trying to find a gospel that can minister to me. And the crazy thing is this, is that before I dip into them, I knew that there were wrong gospels. 
But I was desperate in my life. I was desperate in the situation that I was facing. So you see, in the, that's why the Bible says, he that endures. He that endures. You see, God showed me that I got weak in my walk with them. And I began to listen to this guy here. Oh, okay, maybe I'll buy his book. No, no, I can't buy the book. I mean, the guy is just making me feel good. Well, I mean, really financial needs. So I'm going to listen to these prosperity gospels. Maybe they have it. Uh, you know, what's happening today in the world? A lot of prosperity gospels, preachers, they're repenting of what they're doing. I won't mention names, but I know two or three of them that they said, forgive us because all these years that you have made, in other, I, I, I'm doing the NIV, right? Uh, the, the living Bible now, the living translation now. He says, forgive us. Right on the TV, you can go to Google, you can find those preachers. Forgive us because all the years that we've been teaching you about tithing and offerings, we were wrong. So that the followers got mad at them. You were wrong. So they're saying, you mean that I gave you thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars? And your teaching was not really of God. Then another one. Oh, I'm sorry. I use gimmicks to raise money for my ministry. And these both ministry, they have millions and millions of dollars. They are both millionaires. You want to teach true gospel? Let me, let me, let me teach you true gospel. You know, you know what, the, what the true gospel is? Repentance, what they both did, was fantastic. But the problem was that there was no fruit to the repentance. So for the past... 20 years I, I took money from you with all my gimmicks and all my manipulations. And I have millions of dollars in the bank. I can say forgive me. But true repentance is this. I'm going to take 90% of the money that I have in the bank. And I'm going to find a way how to give it back to the communities. Amen. That means that the true gospel got a hold of them. Oh my God, come on, come on, come on. Am I in the right church today? Am I in the right church today? Are we learning the true gospel or we want to embrace the wrong gospels in our life? You see, the book of Acts talks about fruit. When somebody says, forgive me, watch for the fruit. If there is no fruit, there was never repentance. Oh my God. You know, I, I, you know the, the, reason, the reason I love preaching the true gospel is a very unpopular message. But I know, listen, I'll give you a secret. I know that thou art with me. That's the answer. When you do things God's way, He is with you. People might not be for you. It's okay. When I go to heaven, you're not going to be the doorkeeper. He is. And I want Him to say, Come in, my thou good and faithful servant. But true gospel, don't teach to seek that. Even though, even though true gospels will get that. I don't, I don't preach the true gospel. So Jesus can say, come in, thou good and faithful servant. No. I am unworthy of the blood. I am an unworthy person that deserves hell. 
but because of his mercy, his love, his compassion towards me. He has allowed me to have the revelation of the word of God, the true gospel. So when you have the true gospel, you don't care about him saying, come in, thou good and faithful servant. I'm not going to go in happy that I'm getting in. I'm going in with my head bowed. Knowing that I don't deserve to, I don't deserve heaven. I deserve hell. And that is the heart of the true gospel. It is Christ and Christ alone. It's not what we have done. It's not what we have accomplished. But it's what he has done. He said, when I saw that they were straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter, hey, Peter, come, come. Before them all. And this is what he preached. Listen, this is today, today's message. For Canada, for the world. He says, if you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, Why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? Do you get it? 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 Because if you have it, you will never be the same. You will seek to be like Christ. I'll translate it to the New Testament. It says, if you, being a Christian, Live in the manner of the world and not as the Christians. Why do you compel the world to live as Christians? Oh my God. Come on. Is this for today, Dave? <laughs> is this for today? Is there a separation? Is there is there a mix? Of people in our churches? Is there a mix of people in, in this city, in this nation? Yes, it is. And that's why Paul, that's why God wants us dead to self. And he says in verse 15, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a Man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But let's continue to understand it. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ... We ourselves also are found sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. Verse 19. For I through the law die to the law that I may live to God. Verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. And this is the theme of our school of discipleship this season. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. See, now it's getting deeper in this portion of his scripture. He says, he says, for though 
But I through the law, I died to the law that I may live to God. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I. It is no longer it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, the problem that we have today is that we do not seek to be dead in Christ. We have to understand that salvation, and that's what we teach in, uh, in, um, in uh, water baptism, right? That you are no longer slave to sin. We're going to read that right now. You're slave to sin, that now that you're a slave to righteousness. So that means that we ought to be, when we go under the water, we die with Christ. We put on the all life away. So that means that the all life now through the word of God is dead. Now when we come out, we receive this new life. And when we receive this new life, then we understand. The Bible says that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So that means that if we walk in the light, we are going to sin. Why? Because we're dead to sin, but sin will try to manifest. So when he manifests... Then the Bible says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood will cleanse you from that right now. So you can live every day cleansed by all sins. So that means that when they, all you wants to come out, you got to put it to death. Come on. When that all you comes out, that anger. That hatred, that jealousy, that envy, that whatever may be, you say in the name of Jesus, get down there. I am dead to you and I destroy you in the name of Jesus Christ. You see what a lot of people like, uh, Dave, is this. We like whipped cream in a Christian walk. We like a little bit of sin. We like a little bit. Well, that's the way I was brought up. That's the way I am. And nobody in the world is going to change me. I got that from my mama. I got that from my dad. And, uh, you know, nobody's going to change me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and then now, Romans 6. He says, what should we say then? Should we continue in sin that the grace may abound? Certainly not. How should we? Oh, listen, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I pray you get this. Because this is the word of God. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And this is the problem. The problem is that we don't understand the fullness of the scriptures of God. Who we are, who he is, what he's done for us. And the freedom that he's already provided for us. He says, certainly not. How shall we who died, died, past tense, to sin, live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into what? Into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Amen. Oh, brother, you have new life. Oh, yeah. I've been born again. I have new life. You struggle? Oh, yeah. Are you dead? Oh, yeah. You have seen a new life? Oh, yeah. You see, the revelation of the word of God is what the disciples had. 
It was not the reading of the word. It was the revelation of the word. Many pulpits they preach reading from the word. But is the revelation of God getting a hold of God's people? Because if we all understood that, including myself, if we all understood this, that means that when we walk, when we get up out of our place, we are dead to self. We are dead to sin. If, you know, if, if I preach a message, who wants to be dead to, to sin? Everybody will raise their hands. But then the next question will be, who wants to live knowing that you're dead to sin every second of the day that you're awake? Because if we, if we understand that we are dead to sin every second of the day when we're awake, then we will be aware of the enemy. Then we will be aware of the, of the flesh. And that's when the Bible says, say the Bible says, that's when the Bible says, for I am not ignorant of the schemes of the devil. Right? You see, we are on the way to perfection. We are on a way to holiness. Right? Though the outer man perishes, the inner man is renewed day by day. So we are on the way to holiness. We are the way to perfection. Because he's a perfect God. He's a holy God. And we will never journey in that journey unless we have the true gospel and understand the word of God. As it is, saints... When you accept Christ into your life, he set you free. You are no longer a slave to sin. You're free. Now you're dead to sin. Amen. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. And we got this newness of life. Verse 5. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly we also should be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this. That our all men was. W-A-S. Was. Crucified. With him. So what is our job? If our, if our all men was crucified with Christ, why do we like to activate him and make him alive again? Why? You know the reason why? Is because you were in love with your old you. You were in love with the old you. The reason that the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. Because the Messiah was meek and lowly. He humbled himself. They were looking for a warrior. Jesus was not the warrior they were looking for. So that's the reason that they didn't accept him as the Messiah. But some of us, we like the old us. This is the way of us. I'm very direct. I'm very firm. I'm very to the point. I'm very like this. I have good morals. This is the way I was raised. And this is the way I'm going to stay. But you were dead to all of that. Well, yeah, I'll give up this, this, this. I'll keep this, 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 this. I'll keep that, this, this, this. But nobody's going to take that because that's my identity. That's who I am. Don't take who I am. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> My God. So the reason that we, even though we understand that we have been crucified with Christ, the reason that we still keep the old man alive in some areas of our life is because we used to love the old man.
Maybe they are, they, maybe they all you was respected when you walk into Tim Hortons. You were respected in the world. I mean, you were respected. But now the word of God teaches you get the out of your life. You are just by dust. There is none righteous. There is not no one. Oh my God, come on. This is good Holy Ghost teaching to death. This teaching leads to death. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm not coming to this class anymore. I'm not going to put up with his abuse. I'm not going to put up with this. This is the way I was brought up. This is where I'm going to stay. There's nothing wrong with part of my old man. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Keep it. Then you'll embrace the wrong gospel. Because the true gospel is what got a hold of Peter and, and Paul. That's the reason they're able to write this. Hallelujah. It says that our all men was crucified with him. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer, no longer, no longer. Queenie, no longer be a slave to sin. For he who has died has been free from sin. Now if we die with Christ, we believe that we also should live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. Death Shall not have no longer dominion over us. For the death that he died, the death that we died, he died to sin once and for all, that we may be free from sin. But the life that he lives. He lives to God. I'm closing now. Whatever that means. Likewise. You also. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reckon yourself to be dead in, indeed to sin. But a life that, you see, all of this is for us to be happy. For us to have the joy of the Lord. For us to have the strength of the Lord. For us to live happy lives. For us to see the blessing of God upon our homes, upon our marriages, upon our children. Upon everything that we do and touch. I tell you, I was a hard-headed when I came to Christ. So hard-headed that I had to go through hell and back, up and down. I sin. I crucify Christ. Because I was fighting. And the reason I was fighting is because I didn't have the revelation that I was dead to sin. Nobody explained it to me that I was indeed dead to sin. Nobody explained it to me that if the flesh comes up, I have the authority and the power to bring it down in the name of Jesus Christ. No, what they taught me is that we can all struggle. We all struggle, John. We all struggle. We all struggle with this and we struggle with that and we struggle. Uh, I'll pray for you, okay, brother? I pray for you. You see, what was missing and what is still missing today is the true preaching of the true gospel of the true Christ. Not a, not a phony Christ. No. 
I said to somebody recently, I said, that's not the true Christ in them. Because if they have the true Christ, they wouldn't gossip about me. They wouldn't judge me. They wouldn't go by me without saying hi. When they're ministers of the gospel. I said, they don't have my Jesus. Because I've been around people that I don't like. But they're God's children. So I'll respect them and I'll say hi to them. I might have a different opinion about them. But I respect them. And when pulpits are behaving like that. Imagine how pews have been taught to behave. And they try to defend them. And I say, I've been there. I've been there. These are ministers of the gospel with the wrong gospel. Not with the true Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you shall obey it in its last. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourself to God as being alive from the dead. <laughs> alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law. But under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under the law. But under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom. This is the most scary scripture. I quoted in this church many times. And this is verse 16. Don't you know. That to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey. You are that one slave whom you obey. Whether of sin leading to death. Or obedience leading to righteousness. My translation is this. Whoever we submit our members to. We become servants to. If we submit our members to sin. We become servants to the devil. And to the sinful nature. If we submit ourselves to righteousness. Then the Bible says here. Of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that through you. Though you were slave to sin. And yet you obey from the heart. That form of doctrine. To which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin. You became a slave to righteousness now. So that means that when you wake up. You say good morning Lord Jesus. My first prayer every morning. For years is Lord. I submit myself to you. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And then I have a chat with the Lord. I clear the air the air because you know and you say do you have to say that all the time no you don't have to say that all the time if you live a life of submission unto God the only thing you have to do is say devil get out of here and he has to get out in Jesus name it, it says and having been set free from sin you became a slave to righteousness I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh for just as you presented your members as a slave as of uncleanliness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, 
So now present your members as a slave of righteousness for holiness. Come on. How many know that whatever God tells us to do, he will help us accomplish it? Amen. You know, if he says, be holy. Lord, I don't know if I can be holy. I know. But if you commit yourself to be holy, I'll help you be holy. I don't know how to be righteous. Well, if you commit yourself to be righteous, I'll help you be righteous. Amen. But for, for the Bible says that we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Be careful with that scripture. Just because you accepted the Lord doesn't mean that you are the righteousness of God. The Bible says, for we have become the process, the growth, the journey. So if you are in the right journey, then you can claim that scripture that says, I have become the righteousness of God. Why? Because I choose holiness. I choose righteousness. I choose the cross. I choose Christ. I choose the right gospel. I choose repentance. I choose the hard truth of the word of God. And I'll embrace the hard truth of the word of God. I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to sign up to be tortured. I'm going to sign up to be imprisoned. I'm going to sign up to be, to be crucified for the name of Christ. I'm closing. For when you were a slave to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now to shame? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become a slaves to God, you have your fruit to holiness. And, and the end, everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 36. For your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Second Corinthians 4, 11. For we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal body. I'm going to stop right here, and we're going to continue next week. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 So now what we have to do, let every eye cl be closed right now. We're going to say a general prayer. I mean, you got to go to, um, to read. Uh, go home, saturate yourself with Galatians 1, Galatians 2, and let the Word of God speak to you again about what took place here and what can take place in your life. And, um, you know, there is a saying, do not complain for what you have allowed. If you allow sin into your life, if you allow unrighteousness in your life, don't complain about it. Don't complain that there is an obstacle somewhere. Don't complain that, that you're not getting through in prayer and intercession. Don't complain that God doesn't come through for you. You have blocked them. So don't complain for what you allowed. So get rid of all the things that we allowed. Why? Because you were dead to sin. You are dead. Amen. If you're a Christian, you're dead to sin. So don't let sin rise again. Then your family will say, my God, what happened to my baby? What happened to my hubby? What happened to my sweetie? She's no longer the all her, the all him. He's a new person. What happened to him? Hallelujah. And then they will say, honey, I forgot that I was dead to sin. Forgive me. For all that you saw was me being alive with the old man. 
but now I want to be dead to the old men. The old men didn't get me anywhere. The old men got me into trouble, and that's all I, I understood, trouble. But now that I am dead to sin, but alive unto God, I want to live the rest of my life unto him who died and rose again. And that's what my desire is today, Lord. Now that I live, I live unto him who died and rose again. For it is no longer I that shall live, but Christ shall live in my life. So Father, do the work. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us the way we fight you. Forgive us, Lord, for entertaining the fruit of the flesh. Forgive us, Lord, for entertaining the old man. But God, help us to daily crucify the flesh, to crucify that which is already dead. And give us a revelation of what it means to be dead to sin. That means that nothing should be alive that is from the past. Nothing wrong that is contrary to the word of God should come alive in us. Why? Because we are dead to sin. But we are alive unto God in righteousness. Amen. Now our gift unto God is our righteousness. Our fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Father, as hearts are crying out to you, as hearts are acknowledging their hang-ups and their obstacles, I break the power of sin upon their lives. And I set them free to the revelation that they are now, from this moment on, they are dead to sin and alive unto God. Lord, that we will not leave this place to entertain the old man again or to grasp once again what we had when we came into this place today. And we pray for everyone that listens to this teaching over social media. We pray, God, that you will do a work in them as well. Oh, God, because what Canada needs is people full of the true Christ, full of the true spirit, and full of the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to save this nation. So we submit ourselves to you. And we say thank you for giving us the privilege of understanding your word and for saving us in Jesus' name. Amen. And everybody say amen. amen. Before we go, before we go, before we go, I'm going to teach tomorrow a song. If you're here tomorrow, I'm going to teach.